Okay, we are live. We are here. Welcome to the Fripp and Folly Outdoor Podcast. We are privileged today to have Captain Glenn Flowers on our podcast and uh, live here on Facebook. And uh, Fripp and Frawley for you guys is high quality, comfortable t shirts dedicated to the outdoor enthusiasts. They've got wicking shirts, cotton tees, long sleeve short, all kind of patterns for any type of sportsman. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're about the best quality of t shirt that you can get anywhere. And they're the great people that are bringing this podcast to us. And hopefully, if you don't learn anything today, maybe you'll just be entertained. So today we've got, like I said, Captain Glenn Flowers. And uh, Glenn is from the Pensacola, Florida area. And Glenn, welcome to the show, buddy. How's it going, Scott? It's going good. Long time no see. Yeah. People yep. don't know how these things get started. You know, we, we have to get them hooked up, and then we sit mm-hmm. here talking for 30 minutes or so to make sure everything's going. So sometimes those are the best things. that If, if you could go behind the scenes and watch the beginnings, those right. are the ones that are a lot of fun. Yeah. But, uh, so you're a charter captain down there, and so you fresh, uh, you fresh, you fish fresh and salt water. So tell us a little bit about what all you do down there. Well, we fish specifically for catfish. It's kind of uh, kind of my thing. Love them flatheads. That's what we specialize in. Big cat, big flatheads, and a lot of numbers of flatheads. Uh, we love uh, to catch blue cats too. But this year we're going to start doing a lot more bay fishing. A lot of grouper, snapper. I've got 550 inshore bay wrecks right in Pensacola. And every single one of those wrecks are loaded with fish. When you pull up on it, the screen blows up. But this year, with snappers and groupers. Uh, We went out the other day, did a bay trip. Weather's finally getting nice. It's February, but it's 80 degrees every day. It's crazy. (laughs) A lot of us around here would love to have a little 80-degree day. Mm. We... uh, out here in the Midwest, Snow. in the Midwest, we have uh, oh about sixty degrees, rainy. Of course, we need the rain. We're real dry out here, mm. and uh, so we could definitely use the rain to get some of these water in the lakes and rivers where we can float these boats. So uh, anyway, so you're in the Pensacola area there, and um, so first we'll start off with the hard work. And that's your offshore stuff. What? What? Tell us a little bit. What? What all's entailed in that offshore stuff when you go out there? Because I've heard some of those stories. And mercy, you're you're tougher than me. Oh, it's tough. You know, sometimes we go out there. We're out there for days, and uh, it gets hot. You know, sometimes it gets real rough. Uh, we used to. I used to work on a boat called the Real Encounters, which is a nice charter boat out of right here out of Pensacola. And uh, he no longer has the boat, but yeah, we'd go out there for three, four days sword fishing. It's fun. No, oh. grouper fishing, bay fishing. But this year is going to be specifically. I really want a special. I want to. It sounds like Katie wants to be on the show. Yeah. I got look here. That's Buster. This is my boy, Buster. That's my boy. <laughs> yeah, I got a kitty back here. He sleeps on my head every night. <laughs> He's something else now, Buster. You can't get up here, so you gonna have to get over here. I'm sorry. Glenn, no, but yeah. but yeah, this year I really want to put a lot of attention on the bay fishing. Pensacola Bay is such a phenomenal fishery. You know, it's overlooked a lot of time. For years past, they never really promote the cat the saltwater stuff because I didn't want it to take anything away from the catfish. Cause catfishing is what I do. It's what I love to do. You know, I didn't want to take anything away from that. But this year, it's time to crack that egg and let it out of the bag. And it's, it's gee, when, as soon as I started running the saltwater charters, the phones have blown up. I have I have no more openings this week. Some days I have two trips a day. Uh, well, so tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I've got a catfish rally. Saturday, then another charter Sunday. So And it's all bay. And thank goodness, because the rivers, we just got a lot of rain. Our rivers are out of the banks, probably a mile out in the woods right now. So so you're out there, and, and you say you bunk out like two or three nights? Mm-hmm. Before? Yeah. Yeah, we stay off. You, know, you sleep out there. 
Uh, on the longer on the longer trips, I do the same thing with the catfish. I'd run excursions catfishing. Well, I'll take people up here to the river camping, and we'll be up there for three or four days on the river riverside camping. We set up the we set up the campsite. Yeah, uh, it's just if you were to go to the Amazon River, it's similar to that. It's all it's all what is a wild experience. Really, um, uh, that sounds set, kind of uh, kind oh, of eerie out there. Yeah, you you get a little so, rough. Nah, nah, it ain't too bad. Nah, it ain't too bad. So even out there on the on the big ocean or whatever, I mean, how far out do you go? About eighty five to hundred miles. Uh, you got to pack a lot of gas in. Yeah. Or Sometimes, diesel, I don't know what you're running. Yeah, diesel, diesel. No, oh, no. I mean, let's see what we got. All right. And I also, while I'm here, I just want to say welcome to all my flathead guys. I just shared it to my flathead catfish hunters page, so these catfish people are about to start coming in. There you go. And and all you guys get out there and share some of this stuff. We're, we're actually going to, uh, each week that we have these podcasts, we're going to, we're going to draw a name from uh, some of the people that share, and um, we're going to give away a, a cool little uh, care package. Mm. Uh, looks like a, a cotton tee or a, maybe a wicking tee, a uh, koozie, cap, a tumbler. You know, who can't use an extra tumbler right here? And so oh, yeah. It won't, may not say Sportsman Channel on it. It'll say Frick and Folly. You know what? But, uh, that'd be a fun little thing for you guys. So all of you share as much as you can. And get that out there and get the word going. And check out these Fripp t-shirts and stuff because you guys are really going to like them. What are you digging yeah. for? Well, I've got so many decals, but I was going to do a little give away too and give away some of these big cows to some of the shares but I guess I'm sold out I guess it sold out while I was going they sell so quick but you can't keep them in there can't keep them in stock well, there you go uh, so but, you, just, but, you just teased everybody yeah, Buster, what do you think about that buddy he just sitting there just looking at me like what are you, who are you talking to and what's going on yeah, are, why uh, are you talking to the screen dad <laughs> okay man so you, you uh, most people around there where you're at there at the panhandle I guess you, you're in the panhandle there in Pensacola. That's just Northwest. some place that when I first heard about that's where you're at, you don't think about catfish over there. You don't. Uh, you know, but, but here you, I mean, it, it's it's unbelievable. Uh, the catfishing showed up in Florida in 1982. That's when the first one was discovered. He was caught below the Jim Woodruff Dam on the Apalachicola River, so they called in the biologist to come down there and look at this strange fish nobody knew what it was uh i wasn't even i was just born that year i was born in 82 so first one showed up they did the they started studying and they come to conclusion that it's politics is all of air flathead catfish and what had happened was north on the flint river some commercial fishermen commercial cat fishermen started putting a new fish in there to create a new fishery because all it was was channel cats so to create more revenue and have bigger fish to sell at the markets, they started putting flint, flathead catfish in the flint. They worked their way down to Lake Seminole. They jumped their way. They jumped the Jim Woodruff Dam and worked their way through. It took them 10 years to dominate the Appalachians. Then from there, with every flood, they spread east and west. Every time we get some rain and it, the banks would jump, they jump from this body to that body. And then before you know it, every, every everybody in water's got them, and we aren't complaining. I mean, is there, a, is there a lot of pressure on the fish there? Nope. Uh, I mean, I'm, you've got all these flatheads, and you've got all those fishermen down there, just not everybody wants to fish for them? Well, the biggest thing is we have so much saltwater fishing. That's, like I said earlier, I don't want to take take away from my catfishing. Yeah. We have so much saltwater here that when the I, when the word catfish comes up, pick, what do you know? You know what people think. Oh, bottom feeder, whisker, mud, whatever, especially to the glamorous, uh, high glittering saltwater fish out here, the big mahi mahis and red snapper. So there's not a lot of pressure, but it's growing very, very quickly. Uh, well, well, when I started. Bonus, isn't it, wouldn't it be like a bonus fish down there for people? You know, they, they've been fishing, you know, salt for a while, inshore, offshore, whatever, mm -hmm. and then they get to come in. Because, I mean, I'm sure those flatheads are pretty good size now. Yeah, and let's be honest. Other than amberjack and sharks, you have a better chance of catching a bigger fish 
right here on one of these rivers than you do offshore. Yeah. I mean, 50, 60, 70 pound catfish. You know, with, there's always the possibilities of a triple digit swimming around that you're going to hang into. A 50 pound fish, that's used that for probably 90% of the people out there, that'd be the biggest fish they'd ever catch. Oh, you're exactly right. You know. they, they, most people, if it's, oh, be honest with you, most people, if they caught a 30 pound fish, it may be the biggest fish that they've ever caught. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, but yeah, the, then the blue cats, they started showing up in the 90s. So blue cats are very new to Florida, but they're, they're taking off just as quickly. So what I do, and what I've already done, I'm taking net names down as fast as I can jot them, is booking combo trips. I'll have a guy, I just booked one the other day, a three-day trip. He's coming down for vacation. We're going to fish three days. Uh, one day we're going to go bay fishing, snapper, grouper, redfish. We're, your arms are going to be wore out. No fish, no pay policy. You don't catch any fish, you don't pay for a trip. Uh, uh, okay, that's see you back there. <laughs> uh, I have my phone because you're. An, I got to answer. Oh, answer question. Uh, so then after that, the next day or that night, we go home, uh, get some rest, get some food, hit the rivers that night. Go wear out the flatheads, boom, 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 boom. And then we come back in. And it's just that, that goes on for like two or three days. It's a lot of fishing. You know, it's a little more for the extreme anglers and the people that want a little more out of their trip. Uh, but bays, I mean, there won't be no shortage of fish here. I got a message on here from Greg Dawes. Hey, Greg, it says flathead catfishing is best next to catching the bait. And, you know, it's funny. I've actually got a, a highlight point right here that I was going to ask you about catching bait. So I don't know whether you think that catching bait is fun, but that's part of your day. I mean, is is I'm sure is catching bait. So tell a little bit about what the people uh, that never has really caught bait what, what's, what's that consist of? Catching bait is one of the funnest parts. Every time you go fishing, I mean, who doesn't like to catch big brim, big bluegills, bullheads? And bullheads is another fish that we specialize in. And you kind of learn to be an expert in bullhead because you have to. An excellent bullhead fisherman, an excellent bluegill fisherman. Every trip before we go flathead fishing, we bring 100 bluegills. Right. Because uh, some nights you'll catch over 30 flatheads. You'll burn through a hundred of them in a night, uh, and if you don't, it's better to have too much bait than not enough. So, like the old saying goes, as soon as you think you caught enough bait, catch a few more. But the bullheads, we start using bullheads after the spawn, when the fish, when the flathead. Tell people what a bullhead is now. Now, a bullhead is a tiny little catfish. Um, they are in the, I believe they are in the and Marianas family, not that that matters to most people, but it's, they don't get very big, and I say they don't get very big, but there's been a few world records that are being broken right now. As a matter of fact, I believe a state has, now has an 11-pound world record bullhead. So that's catfish eating catfish. That's catfish eating catfish. Now, I'll tell you, <laughs> they, there's, there's, a, there's a little war going on in the catfish world. So... Flatheads love to eat bullheads. Their bullheads are always one of the first fish that's impacted when flatheads move into a new body of water, and that's because they live in the same area. You get a 20-pound flathead living underneath this log with a two-pound bullhead, what's going to happen to the bullhead? He's gone. So the war starts there. When the flatheads go to spawn, they nest up underneath the bank, a male and a female. The, the female lays the eggs. The male runs her out. male guards the nest. Well, at nighttime, the bullheads take advantage, and they have their revenge. The bullheads dart in and out, eating the flathead eggs. Whenever the flathead will chase one out, as soon as he can do that, another bullhead is right behind him to scarf up a mouthful of eggs and go back out. Um, during the spawn, sometimes you actually catch bullheads with eggs in their mouth that they're stealing off of other beds. So what happens is, after flatheads are done spawning, which down here in Florida, it's usually July, they go on a hatred rampage over bullheads. <laughs> I, I swear they're getting their revenge for them stealing their eggs. You throw a bull, you can have eight rods out the back of the boat, put seven bluegills on there, put one bullhead in the middle, and watch that bullhead get get hammered. Well, what's the best way to hook a bullhead? Hooky, it depends. You know. 
Yeah, I'd say it depends on current. If I'm fishing in current, I'm going to hook him through his nose. And you do that because if I turn him tail side, he's going to drown in the current. And he's not going to fight as hard. But if they're current, when there's less current, especially if you're fishing in a slough or lakes or whatever, you hook him right there in that little... Uh, Just a the part right behind the dorsal? That, that fin right there on the back. What do they call that? The little fin. Yeah. Not the door. So you're talking about just back towards the tail. Where he, where he yeah, right back towards the tail. And what that's going to do is when the bullhead sinks, it, it yeah. causes him to, you know, to keep swimming upwards. He's going to keep trying to swim upwards. Right. And it just, they send a great thing about a bullhead, nothing else. Eats. You throw a bluegill down there, you're going to have gars hit it, bass. We've got, matter of fact, in our last catfish rally, we're running a catfish club down here, the first catfish club in the south. And we just did one on Lake Seminole, where the same day we had our catfish club, there was a bass tournament going on. There was, I don't know how many bass boats there were out there. It was crazy. And not to mention, the G3 was running right next to the bass boats. As fast as they could run, I was right on their heels. There you go. <laughs> uh, so at weigh-in, their weigh-in was almost at the same time as our weigh-in. Well, we had one of our catfish guys catch a bass that was bigger than any bass that they had weighed in. It was a seven-and-a-half-pound bass. Uh, and that he caught on a hand size, he calls them teddy ground. Um, That's right. Big, They're so big, you can't palm them, so you got to yeah, so you're them them like this and pull the hook That's out. Right. That's right. And so the bass guys are all looking around. I'm mean, coming over there looking at his bass, and he's holding them up. Anybody want to buy a bass? <laughs> uh, it, it was pretty funny. But, well, that's cool. Let's see. So catching the bait is fun part, and. Uh, you like the bullheads and and uh, and the uh, blue. Now, I mean, now now tell the viewers right here. Now, this is what you're fishing for flathead. You're not fishing yeah. this for blue cat. Now, tell the difference now. How you how these see these flatheads are more opportunists. Mm -hmm. They just kind of lay there. That's why the shape of their head. They're laying there, kind of the ambush. They I like call them more. Bait. I call them more predatory predatory than opportunist. And it's the, uh, at night time, these bad boys, they go on the hunt like like a like a wolf or a coyote. When that sun hits the horizon, you ever seen the movie I Am Legend? No. No? Okay. Well, there's a scene where there's these animals, and they only come out at night. And there's a sliver of light left on the road right here. And as the sliver starts to go away, the predatory animals, you know, it's almost like a gate in front of them. As soon as the light's gone, they come out. And that's what happens with flatheads. As the sun's starting to set, these flatheads, they start to make circular motions inside their territorial area. And uh, once the sun goes out, they start spraying further and further out of that territory, and they go on the hunt. And down here in Florida, some of these rivers, they come alive. I always say you can tell how good the flathead bite is by what the river's doing. Mm. Uh, you, some nights it sounds like grown men doing cannonballs out of trees. These are flatheads attacking stuff, and they're not just attacking fish. They're attacking ducks. They're attacking snakes. We pull three-foot snakes out of flatheads. They're attacking any turtles. Just posted a video not long ago of a flathead that ate a big red-eared slider, choking on it. He's floating around on top of the water. He's got this red-eared slider in his mouth, and the boat <laughs> pulls it up, and they pick the flathead up, and they... Pulling on this slider, got him by his back legs, and finally get him out, and turtle's dead. But Flathead's just barely alive. You can yeah. tell by his coloration that he's had that that turtle in there for at least a few days, maybe well, now, maybe know, a day or two. We've been talking about the Flatheads. Now, there's a total different application as you're going after blue cats. So what's the difference in uh, in the Flatheads towards the blue cats? It lures for cats, old blue cat. Now, blue cat, he's a whole nother ball game. That's a... Uh, that's a they grit they get bigger. To me, they're easier to catch than a flathead. Off if you're if if you're starting your uh, fishing career, a cat fishing career, I would say start with blue cats because they're a little bit easier to catch because it's easier to acquire bait. Um, you don't need to go around round up a hundred bluegills and have a big intricate live well system. Uh, you just they'll you, eat about anything, won't they? Yeah, mostly skipjack, skipjack, 
Gazer Chad, there's a couple of guys out there, they actually use perch for bait, white perch. And I've never used perch, and they're probably illegal to use here in yeah, Florida. Yeah, I, but... I would think that would be. We've, uh, I just noticed that uh, the world-famous Brian Casey has uh, joined us. I mean, he's, he's, he's world-renowned. Oh, and, yeah. You know, and, and right Hollywood now, Casey. We, Hollywood. We, Hollywood. Well, now, he could probably say the same thing about you. He, he don't have his hair spiked up like you do. Uh, oh, well, so, well, I don't have a G3 hat on it. What it yeah, well, it'd mess up that no. hair. I mean, I don't know how much Vaseline. Well, I, would trade this, I would trade this fancy hair, dude, for that fancy NASCAR G3 hat right there. That is yeah, a fancy well, hat. And you can Look see, I, I've at least still got my hair. It just, yeah. it just uh, of course, I used to be at one time, people don't realize this, but at one time I used to be young. And I had, <laughs> I put all the, the, the jizz in my hair and everything else. But you know, yeah, Ryan, I, I, I saw the pictures. Oh, Ryan, he's like me. See, he just he'd rather just put his old ball cap on and, and call it good. But mm -hmm. so, yeah, either one of y'all calling each other Hollywood is just funny. <laughs> but Ryan, welcome to the. If you got any questions for now, how for, can you uh, tell who's in here? Where, well, where I'm looking you? on my phone. I'm, I've been looking on my phone, and it just says it's popping up. Who's there? And in case oh, there's okay. any questions. Now, I mean, here on the Fripp site. They uh, they can do the same as far as popping up any questions or whatever. But I've also shared it to uh, my Facebook. So if you okay. pull up on your Facebook page on your iPhone or your phone, you could probably see who's who's popping up and, and watching. Yeah, I've, I've I've just pulled up the Frick and Folly page. You guys go over there and follow their page. Check them out. But uh, if you shared it over to one of your pages, go to one of your pages, and then you can see who might be. Uh, yeah, I, that's what I. That's what I just did here. I see one of my uh, club senators is actually in here, Ed Turk. Mister Turk, how you doing, Ed? But anyway, we are here on the Fripp and Folly Outdoors podcast. We're just tickled to death to have them to sponsor this. Uh, great T-shirts, some of the best quality shirts. That's what I've got on right here. You can see the old. The old Fripp and Folly logo on there. Great quality shirts. Uh, and down there where you're at, those Wiccan shirts would be perfect, especially this time oh, yeah. of year. Now you got 80 degrees down there every day. I can't. And, uh, so they would be a perfect, perfect fit for down there. And, uh, yeah. So we've How's your weather? Talking, well, we've done a little talking about the flatheads, and, and I don't know that we covered everything we need to know about the, the blue cats. Uh, you, no, we didn't even... It's we just kind of talked blue. about they were they were a whole different cat, no pun intended. Well, I like to think of I like to think of the difference in flatheads and blues is the difference in cows and horses. Uh, the blue cat, he's just a big old cow sitting out there grazing around. The flathead, he's you know he's fast and uh, but the blue cats, if we're blue cat fishing, we're either drifting, dragging. Uh, you know, flatheads were always going to be sitting still, but the blue cats. It's using big chunks of cut bait, uh, fresh cut bait. I like, if I'm going to freeze my bait, I always brine my bait. I make a brine mix using salt and water, especially if it's skipjack and I freeze them. But I prefer if you can get them, and Ryan Casey can attest to that, fresh bait. Fresh skipjack, fresh gizzard chad, fresh bait outproduces frozen bait time and time again. Uh, the old saying of chicken livers and stuff, soap. That's great bait for channel chat. Well, I know that Ryan, I know if he's if he's still watching and listening, you know, he he puts everybody on these big fish. In fact I just watched him on Fox Sports US with my boys uh Bob Richardson and them with Outdoors in the Heartland and put old Bob on a seventy five pound blue and, oh. and usually with me and he he just doesn't realize but um I'm the one that actually got him out there to the public. I, I found him out there, hid, you know, Lost. fishing from the bank. You know, he was kind of wild, and we had to, I had to kind of tame him down a little bit. Yeah, he was just like out in the woods, you know, uh, did, spoke broken English and and all. And I got him out there and and got him out to the public, and and was he get me, you know, ten pounders. You know, at the best. And, I, I watched that show, as a matter of fact. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I always told him, I said, I, I want to catch, you know, five 50 pounders and not 55 pounders. But, uh, no, Ryan's no. Good, good people. So, Ryan, uh, uh, Glenn I here tells me that, that I'll go down there and guaranteed 
to uh, catch a 50 pound flathead with him. No, so. no, I didn't say weight now. I can't guarantee you a 50 pound flathead. <laughs> I'm not going to guarantee you that. But I do guarantee you fish. Well, now, now Mike Mitchell over in Tennessee, he, mm -hmm. he got me in some big old. I guys. saw I saw him that. It, that, that was, was quite, uh, That one was a monster. That was a 50. Uh, he was a big one. He wore me out, I'll tell you. Yeah. That, that was yeah. fun. You know, I tried for, oh, God, five, six years to do a flathead show. And, and, and you'll attest to this because people go, well, have you got two or three days? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, no, I don't have two or three days. I, can we not? Well, you know, then we got to go at night. And this mm -hmm. So good old Mike Mitchell, he said, y'all just come on down here. I'll put you in them. And, and fortunately, we fought a little weather and. But we actually, uh, we actually did it, and he got me. Actually, the second fish I caught was was just huge. He was just a big one. Yeah, biggest, he was a real big one. And biggest on head I'd ever caught. And on skipjack, cut bait. We actually went. That's right. We went and actually caught our bait up there at the dam, and that was just as fun as anything. That was almost like a, a comedy trip up there. We're we're catching our bait and and having having a lot of fun there, but. Uh, but anyway, now, some other things that you do, you're just not a, a, a pretty guy and, and doing your fishing and all that other stuff. You do a lot of seminars and mm -hmm. and, and all that because, I mean, you're backed by some really good companies. I see you've got your setup back there. It looks like St. Croix Rods and, Saint Croix, and Saint. Team Catfish and, of course, G3 with Yamaha. And, and so mm -hmm. what's some of the seminars that are, might be coming on this year? Well... I, I'm not, I don't want to go into too much details on which one they are until we get all the details on them. But, uh, well, just in general, what do you usually discuss, you know? On well, the last, at, at the last one, the last one I did was in Memphis at the Mississippi River Monsters Tournament. Um, and that was a good one. I actually streamed that live on Facebook, and it got over 60,000 views just from that one. Trip. And it was all basically, it was called Flatheads for Beginners. Um, it basically kind of similar to what we're talking about because usually when I'm marketing, not marketing, but uh, elaborating the flathead message is you're usually the guys that know how to catch them, they already know how to catch them. So I'm talking to the people that are trying to figure them out because there's so many people coming into the catfish industry. I mean, they say it's one of the fastest growing sports fisheries today. There's so many new people coming in. The boats are being made. G3's got a great catfish boat now. Every, and there's so many rods, St. Croix involved now. They've made their Mojo Cat rods now, so they're involved in it. And, uh, but the people that we're usually talking to is how to catch them, what baits, you know, the hooks, the basic setup, and just start catching them. Then, you know, then we'll start getting involved in some deeper tactics. Well, and they'll be able to. You'll be able to post. Uh, I'll talk about social media and stuff here in just a bit, but uh, they'll be able to. To find where you're at, what what is the main? And I'll I'll go ahead and put this in a comment here. I had somebody ask me about your about your website and how to get a hold of you. Let me type that in there. What would that be? And so I can put that in there. Uh, flatheads dot us. So it's flatheads dot now, us. Now that's just my flathead page. Now, well, I meant just a a web or something where they can contact you and. Oh, here we go. And, uh, for to to book a trip or whatever, How, which one would they would they get get on there? What would be the best one? So um, you just put it there. www.flathead.us. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and that's where you go to get your flathead information. I've got articles in there that I've done. I've done. I do a lot of articles for you know in fishermen, floor sports, and different places. So I've got a bunch of information in there. But uh, to get a guide. You'll go to cathunters.net. That's where. You got that in there too. Yep. Yeah. I, see. I just I see just that. realized where I can see this other screen over here. Yeah, and and see that's the neat thing about this guys with this live feed. I mean, it it can the information can be, you know, instant. So when you guys are on here and then you have these questions and you ask, I mean, this is something that can just be instant. Right. And yes. that, that's what's fun about this, and I'm really tickled that everything so far is rolling pretty good because. <laughs> Because it can, <laughs> it can get out of hand. And oh, I can imagine. Oh, it can just be but, like perfect example. I was just talking to you earlier about the Catfish Weekly show that I just did. Uh, I didn't realize that not having my headphones on would send the feedback out. Oh. And for ten minutes, it was boom, 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 boom. Oh yeah, boom. we all have hair like you when that's going on. <laughs> I mean, it well, all yeah, no, 
everybody's pulling cords out and everybody's flipping stuff over. Nobody can yeah. figure out where it's coming oh, yeah. from. This yeah, is still but, new to everybody doing it. It is. And, and, it, and so I can't believe that. See, my old brain can't function on this. It, this is, I, I can't believe I learned how to do TV and get on broadcast and edit and do all this other stuff. And so all that's gone. All that's gone. Mm-hmm. I don't have to do this. And, and so now I've got to try to get it in my brain, which I wish I could clean it out like a hard drive. <laughs> and, uh, you know, from like birth to like 25, I don't need that stuff anymore. I can remember whole ball games I played in 30 years ago, but I can't remember <laughs> yesterday. So we were about to touch on some social media. And, I mean, you're, you're really blowing it up on social media uh, what is a good tip for, for some of the guys that are trying to get out there? And we talked a little bit about this before we started rolling. Um, what's a good tip that you can give people about getting their social media page seen and, and get it out there for the people? Uh, just post, post good content, you know, post regular content, uh, you know, give out tips. You know, if you in the old days, catfishing, and that's probably why catfishing has been so under the rug for so long, is because people are so protective over their secrets of catfishing. You know, bass fishing, they'll tell, they'll spill the guts. Everything you want to know, you got it. Well, just recently, catfishing's getting that. Not recently, it's been going on for 20 years now. But uh, give away tips, good tips, teach people how to do something. You know. Um. Let's see here, I got. Join the show. Okay, I got my buddy Chad Bailey in here. He's another Chad Bailey is good actually team, good stuff. Putting putting Florida on the map. Yep, and he is our second catfish guide in Florida. We only have two catfish guides in Florida. He's yeah. our number two. Yeah. Size matter charters. Good guy. Catches yeah. some good fish. Yeah, and so you're saying on social media to maybe to get some. Is is uh, we talked earlier maybe some giveaways or something if you're affiliated with some company or whatever that could mm-hmm. get you some followers or is that some of the things that you've done? Because uh, I mean yeah. I can see some of your stuff and they'll have a million views and a, mm-hmm. you know so any little tip like that that'd be really cool for for some of them. Heck, I might even take a note on it or something. <laughs> well, like t-shirt giveaways. You give away a t-shirt, give away a rod or a hat. And watch the people that come in. Like right now, I've got one going on on Flathead Catfish Hunters. It's a T-shirt giveaway. As a matter of fact, I need to give that T-shirt away tonight because it's I've gotten real busy and just haven't got to it. Uh, like and share a picture. Get people liking and sharing your post because with every share, if you share something, you know, and it goes to someone's wall, all their friends see that, and their friend, if they click or like it, just the network, the way that. They've set the network system up. Information spreads so very quickly. Yeah. And once you, once you start getting your network built up and it just grows, it's like a snowball. The bigger it gets, the faster it rolls. Yeah, yeah and that's something else, guys. Make sure you share. Any of you guys are watching this, make sure you share because Fripp is uh, giving away a nice package yeah. with a T-shirt and cap and a koozie and a tumbler. It's a, it's a nice, about, probably... Forty, fifty dollars worth of stuff right here. I mean, the T-shirts are really, really nice. And so, if you share that on your page, we pick each week somebody to uh, to win some of this. And so, uh, but we're here today. Any of you guys that just popped up, we're here with Captain Glenn Flowers with Flathead Catfish Hunters, and among mm-hmm. other things. And yep. uh, he's he's the man down there, and uh, he's telling us he's been telling us that the Catfish are just abundant in Florida. Oh, they're it's something that we wouldn't think about. You know, that's more of a southern Midwest kind of fish. But uh, I've done two really catfish on the map. I've done, only done two catfish trips this year, which we're only in the second month and a half into it. First catfish trip, we caught eighteen flatheads in January. Now, that's a good January trip. Yeah. Now there wasn't any big ones. I think our biggest one was maybe maybe thirty pounds. Mm-hmm. This last flathead trip we did, we caught uh, 15 fish, one of them being a 50-pound look. So it was a good trip. Have you um, got one of those rods back there rigged up? Um, I bet you I do. I would like for you to just show some of the people some of your, one of your hookups on, on your, just grab one of them. Yeah. While he's there, uh, uh, 
each week, each Monday, we're going to be having these podcasts for everybody. We're going to have different guests on here and different walks of life that uh, is in the outdoor industry and, and stuff, and maybe a guide or an outfitter or, or someone that's affiliated with another company or whatever to just give us some information on on uh, gear and, and stuff. To, if not to let us learn anything, but at least to uh, be a little entertaining, hopefully. We're kind of yeah. new at doing this, and we're having I'm a good time doing it. I've got a ceiling fan up there. St. Croix wouldn't like if I knocked the tips off yeah, the garage. Yeah, those ceiling fans are a rod <laughs> enemy. I mean, oh, I tell everybody that comes in here, every time somebody comes in my office in here, they've got to grab rods and pick them up and play with them. Oh, look at this one. I'm like, why is that Watch guy? Watch that ceiling fan. You will Watch flip that. the tops off. I'm knocking a few of them Watch off. Watch that ceiling fan right there now. Uh, all right, so the first one I'm going to use here. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> is everybody knows, I say everybody, but as soon as I think everybody knows, there's a lot of people that don't, because there's always new people watching. Like I say, that's always the people I'm reaching out to. If you, We were just talking about how to make your social media grow. Have, talk to the people that are getting into it. Teach the new people. Because like I say, the pros, they already know. They already know what they're doing. But first one is just going to be your basic slip lid. You know, we've got, I've got a 9 aught double action team catfish hook there which i love these because i can set them or or crank them down which is great for clients when i'm running charters everyone's not fast enough to get up and drive that hook in mm -hmm. you know set set the hook so that's nice but i just go from a a bead a swivel actually i prefer the uh i've got them on this one the the little yellow bumpers they work a lot better because I've got a beat, a cascaded bead, right, right. little yellow bumpers. You get them from Team Catfish, and mm -hmm. they don't bust. This bead will bust if you get hung up. That weight yeah. smashes it so hard, it just smashes it pieces. Yeah. But here recently, I have been using, and I have really been favoring. Let me just get this out of here. This tell me why, like, why you're using that swivel. Uh, tell me why you're using that. Because that, that, doesn't that keep the twist out? Yeah, yeah, you got to use a swivel on there. And not only does it do that, but another thing I want to point out is I'm using heavy braided line. I'm using tug of war line from Team Catfish, but the my leader is always lighter than my main line because we fish such heavy structure. If you get hung up in the bottom, you're going to go through so much fishing tackle. If you got sponsored, they're going to start getting mad at you because you're losing so much of their gear. <laughs> yeah. You got to have a lighter leader. Said, yeah, and then, so all you're going to be losing is your. You're is just your going leader. to lose. You're going to lose your leader. Your hook. This is your disposable. It's, but you're going to save your swivel, your bumper, mm -hmm. and your weight. And everybody knows lead ain't cheap these days. Yeah, that's a fact. Uh, but here lately, on these eight foot rods. Now this setup that you're doing is that for flatheads. That flatheads and blue caps. Yeah, for. But both. here, here lately, I've been using these guys for flatheads. Uh, they call them little demon dragons, and all it is is basically it's just a spook lure with the hooks taken off and of that's it. That's from Scott Manning. That's from Captain Scott Manning. He's also a G3 certified guy, and he sent me some of these before, and I never really got it. You know, people send me a lot of stuff, so I never really got a chance to use them. They just kind of sat in the drawer, and he messaged me, "Hey, Glenn, did you try the demon dragons?" No, Scott, I, I haven't tried them. I always use the peg float. So no, I haven't tried them. But the difference is this thing's got a rattle in. And there's something about that rattle when you're flathead fishing. You got that bluegill on there, and he's doing his thing. You can hear that rattle coming through this break. Okay, show Radiating. it again. Show it. Show it. You're going kind of fast here, and and so you've you've uh, got that set up. That right there. And right, I see that's tied straight on to the to the leader. Straight okay, on to now, the leader. And then right. your hook is just below its tail. Yep, right? The hook runs through here, and actually, I've got this one rigged up. I was red fishing with it in the bay. I use them for redfish offshore too, but I'll put my weight up here. Right. This the bottom end just ties right to your hook down there. Okay, so the hook is attached right to the tail. Yeah, and I will say. Uh, and then you just hook your your bait, whichever, on the end of that on the hook on that yep. demon dragon. And I actually the, make I actually make my hook a little shorter. If I'm if I'm in the bay, I mean if I'm catfishing, I only have right. my hook that far. Okay, so about right. four or five inches. Yeah, only about four or five inches. Yeah. Now, I've never caught 18 flatheads in February, and I've never caught 15 flatheads in January until I started. And I'm not going to say it's all this thing, but when I fished 
I don't know, the first time I tried them, I said, all right, I'm going to pull these out and I'm going to start trying these things out. The first trip, we took them out and used them. We caught 18 flatheads that night. All flatheads, no blue cats, no channel cats, all flatheads. And as those bluegills are down there kicking, I was like, you hear that? Yep. I was like, that's coming through the braid, coming through the, mm -hmm. the line on mm -hmm. the bottom. You can hear it. Yep. And we pull up on a spot, and as soon as those things get to rattling, the rods are going down there and getting slammed. Yeah. And so I said, I bet you, I guarantee you these things will work for saltwater. I said, I bet you they'll work for saltwater. One of my other buddies, Todd Sykes, he runs a bunch of them. He's one of my club members. He was telling me about using them for redfish. He said, try them things out on redfish. They'll work. And sure enough, the reds are drawn to them just like, you know, like a catfish. So who so, all are you affiliated with now? Uh, I know there's G3 and uh, here with us and, and G3 and Yamaha and and you've got obviously the St. Croix rods and, and uh, you mentioned Team Catfish, our buddy Jeff Williams. Mm -hmm. Team he's, Catfish. Uh, Flea he's our guy, isn't he? He's a, oh yeah, Jeff, he's a great guy. One of, the, one of the heavy hitters in the catfish industry that's really done a lot for the industry. He puts out a lot of good information. And I've learned a lot from Jeff. Jeff came down, stayed with me for a few days last summer, and we went catfishing. And uh, he he really touches home with new catfishmen. That's the big mm -hmm. thing. You know, there's so many pros out there, but there's a lot more people coming in. Oh, well, absolutely. And that's something that's, you know, coming up this weekend is the uh, Catfish Conference in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, yeah. I don't know whether you're going to go to it, but uh, Jeff is going to have his team catfish booth set up there. I'm actually going to go to it this year. We're going to have our uh, our G3 Sportsman 200 sitting up there all rigged all out. Right. And uh, Jeff so will be you there. guys going to the Catfish Conference, make sure you come by and say hey to all of us. Are you going to it, Glenn? Or? No, no, I've got charters booked all through that. Uh, I understand that. Now, actually, you know what? I believe I have. That's on a Saturday, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah, Friday and Saturday of this, this coming weekend. This coming weekend, yep, I've got a uh, club rally on Lake Talquin this weekend. That's where I'll be. So that'll be interesting, though. I'll be looking forward when we're on the rally, looking forward. And I know there's going to be a ton of information that's going to be broadcasting over social media. Oh, yeah, there'll probably be live feeds going on. Going on. <laughs> there's going to be so much live feed going on. But it would it's great to go to these events. Like here in Memphis, we had a lot of the catfish guys come together to get to shake hands and put faces to the faces we see on Facebook and Instagram. That's right. That's right. You know, it, it's really, it's a good thing. And Steve Douglas, he's done a great job of doing it. He's mm -hmm. put a lot of time into it. Yeah, him and uh, Jeff Jones Marine. Jeff uh, Jones. You know, Jim Hopper's affiliated in that. And, and uh, I talk to Jim probably on a weekly basis. And uh, it's good people, the catfish. Con and, you know, for, for the most part, catfishermen are just good people, man. They're just good yeah. dudes. Yeah, we come at each other's throats a lot of times, but oh, they you know you'll have that stigma. They'll be dirty or have some slime mm -hmm. on them. Their boat might not be the prettiest or whatever. But let me tell you now, catfish are going cool. to fork out some big dough for some for mm -hmm. some for some gear on their oh, boats, yeah. their motors, their yeah. trucks. And that know. and everyone tells me I've talked to a lot of people, and they say the catfish conference is the place to go if you're a merchant, if you're. That's right. Rods or T-shirts, um, you know, whatever, what have you. Jeff, Jeff was telling me about the amount of stuff he got he sold out last year. He underestimated what he could. Yeah, that's what he said. He said he's bring he's bringing a tractor trailer this time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that, the catfishmen really are. They're they're just good people. I mean, you you can any they'll help you out if you're stranded or or you're broke down or whatever. Some of them bass boats may buzz on by you, but let me tell you, them good old boys putting along over our catfishing, they'll, they'll come over and check on you. They'll, they'll get you back. They'll stay with you. Make sure you get get back and get home and get safe. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're like, like any other fishermen. They wouldn't want to give up their best places, but uh, they'll certainly help you. And that's what we've had today is, is Glenn. Uh, hopefully he's helped us uh, learn a little bit more about what he does and, and the catfishing and some offshore stuff out of Pensacola. It's a great area to go to. I, I, I certainly uh, would uh, tell you guys that if you're in that area, you're looking for a vacation spot or something to do, you ought to holler at Glenn. He put yeah. his information there and uh, there on the comments that you can reach him or you can just get on Facebook and just type in Glenn Flowers and you're going to find him. 
I'm sure it'll pop up somewhere. But uh, <laughs> you're a good ambassador to the sport, Glenn. We're, we're certainly tickled up to have you on here on mm-hmm. our uh, Prep Outdoor Podcast. Yeah, uh, not kind of went without here. a hitch. And uh, uh, if there's anything you'd like to add, you go right ahead. And 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 uh, or otherwise, I think we've kind of covered everything. And I, me and you yeah, both another, had a deep supper. Yeah, we. I'm, yeah, dinner in there waiting for me. Uh, another cup. I can I'll, smell it. I'll, fried chicken. Yeah, fried chicken. Has, yeah, smell of vision works great these days. Smell of vision. Uh huh. <laughs> Now, another company I'm working with this year is going to be uh, TTI Blakemore. Yeah. Uh, great company. A lot of, you know, they work with Jeff, so, you know, so mm-hmm. that's, going to, that's another good company. Um, but the Demon Dragons, I saw somebody on there was looking for where they can get the Demon Dragons from. You can actually go to Scott Manning's page. Was it the Tennessee River Monsters? Yep, Tennessee River um, Monsters, Scott Manning. That's another good guy. I'm telling you, Scott catches fish. He is. Fish. I fished with him, and that was the first time I'd saw the Demon Dragons. And uh, you How know they that Pecker Wood, he's going to charge me $100 for, for, for his favorite one. Oh, and yeah? Then, hey, and then what I got him, <laughs> I, I got the last laugh because I think he lost it the next <laughs> day. <laughs> well, see, that, that's what happened to me the first time he he sent them to me just to look at them and stuff, and I took them out, lost all four of them four casts in a row. Boom, 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 boom. They were gone. I was like, well, there goes that. I grabbed out my box, my bag of corks and put the cork back on. Uh, but it wasn't until I actually got a chance to use them without losing them that I realized, hey, these things, they actually kind of work. These yeah. things are doing it. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll but, tell you what we'll do after we after we sign off this evening. We'll go through and, and uh, we'll look at the comments and all that's on there, and we'll try to get your questions answered. And uh, but right now we just want to thank Captain Glenn for spending some time with us and and letting us in on his world and and teaching us a little bit about some flatheads and the difference between them and blue cats and and the stuff that all is going on down there in the Pensacola area. We want to thank Fripp and Folly mm-hmm. uh, for oh. producing and helping with this uh, outdoor podcast. It's uh, check them out, frippandfolly.com dot com, and uh, I'm telling you boys the nicest long and short sleeve t-shirts that you will find if anything that you're in in the outdoors they've got a pattern or a or all a, a ski a, a theme or whatever <laughs> on their shirts it's just wonderful they're good quality shirts i love them i wear them about every day and uh so check them out and uh, and, and share the and video and what's that and share that's right share yeah. this right here so that you can win that mm-hmm. uh frip and frolly uh uh, care package to where you can get your own t-shirt and cap and and, and, and koozie right and the less shares there are the better chance your odds are so <laughs> yeah. well i got a feeling there's going to be quite a few shares so between me you mm-hmm. and folly and i think there's going to be quite a few shares so i I'm, i just put it on team catfish so it's going there now yeah uh, so it, well, all right, good. Mr. Glenn, we really appreciate you, mm-hmm. you know, spending some time with us out here. And uh, I'm Scott ah. Turner, the old G3 Sportsman, going to sign off here. Thank you guys you for uh, coming into our Facebook world. And we'll be out there next week with somebody talking about something, something. I guarantee you, and having some fun. So, well, Glenn, let me, thank let you, me. sir. I'm fixing to sign it off, so I've got to tell you bye. And uh, thank you a bunch. Yep, appreciate it, Scott. We'll talk to you next time, and come on down. We'll go fishing. All right, man. We'll see you.